Good morning. This is of February 2016. Do you hear? You English pig. Or is where we at? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Oh. Oh. The last video I made, um, it showed a little bit of my body, which caused offence to some people. So I had to be more careful. It wasn't anything that uh, provocative. It was just that um, a little bit more. It wasn't anything rude. It was just. Um, 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 you know, some people, anyway, cheers. Yeah, this is my first video of this year. I'm born in 1939, so 1939, how old am I now? 2016, so in three years time, I will be if I was born in 1939, in 19... Seven, no, if I was born in 1939... 19, I was born in 1939. Um, the year now is 2016, so in 2019 I will be 80. Is that right? So... I'm not 80 yet, so that's three years away. So I reckon I must be 77 this August. It's a 77. I never expected to live beyond 60, to be honest. I really didn't. Especially not to be looking as well as I do. Mm. <laughs> I think I'm amazing for nearly 77. Um, getting back to that, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really think I would live to, 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 to 60. Um, I actually smoked until I was 60. And I was told when I was about 55 or so, when I had some breathing problems, that I had emphysema and that if I didn't stop smoking, I would be dead by the time I was 60. Well, well, I didn't stop smoking. But I stopped smoking when I was 60. I started smoking when I was 15 years of age. You, you could buy one, one cigarette from the local shop across the road from where I worked in Old Queen Street near Parliament Square, not far from Big Ben. You could buy one cigarette. Everybody smoked in those days, everybody. Well, not dogs and cats, but humans. And not little kids of... Mind you, I have seen, I have heard that kids of 10 or 11 smoke, but I didn't see any. Uh, but uh, my mother and father both smoked. Everybody I knew smoked. It was a sign of being adult and growing up. Gr grown, not growing up, but grown up. Uh, yeah. And then you could buy, you, yeah, you could buy single cigarettes from the shop across the road. In that first job, I was 15 when I started work. Now, it wasn't my first job. The first job, I worked for the Sunday Mirror. Uh, and I hadn't been there long when I became very, very sick. I was in hospital for six months, but to cut a long story short, my second job, I was getting on, I must have been almost 16. Yeah, not far off 16. I was still quite small, five, five feet three inches in height. Uh, not in width, but in height, five feet three inches. Yeah, five, five feet three inches. Quite short. Uh, skinny, undernourished, but very, very active. I was. And I was an office boy. I was in the production department and had to learn about the production of newspapers and magazines and make all the orders... Of course, I didn't do that from the first day. I mean, the, the very first day when I was in that office, I was about on the it, it little, quite an old building, 20 Old Queen Street, London, SW1, just off of Parliament Square. 
and um, we were the main office was a few doors away, but but we were in a they're all old buildings of course and walked up three flights of steps to the office and in the office I had a little desk in the corner near the window and um, over to the left there was two other desks the manager there was a man called Laurie Petch yeah Laurie he, he yeah and there was another man called Norman who'd been in the army uh, not that that's got anything to do with it, but I was yet. Yeah, so there were three of us in that off office, and uh, I enjoyed the work. I learnt quickly. I was pretty quick at learning things, and I also did a lot of uh, messenger work, um, um, rushing all over London. So I got to know London very, very well. I used. Uh, I mean, everything was so urgent in those days in in the media department, and um, I. I used taxis, mainly taxis, and uh, I think I used the underground, but not buses, but e everything had to be delivered very quickly, um, delivering and picking up parcels, um, and that's with my office duties as well. And I got three pound a week, then 1955, three pounds a week. And out of that three pounds, I paid seven and sixpence a week for my season ticket on the train from Broccoli to, uh, I believe I got to London Bridge and then changed to Charing Cross, if I remember correctly. Um, and I gave my mother 30 shillings a week, which left me um, one pound, two shillings and sixpence. Uh, I saved five shillings a week, which left me then 17 shillings and sixpence. And um, th that covered all my needs, really. Um, and um, the only thing I would do with that extra money, I, I had the post office savings account, which I save five shillings a week, but I um, would maybe, I didn't have any, any friends then. My friends mainly were left behind in Bristol. And then I had friends in St. Albans, but in London, when I arrived there at the age of 14 and went to school for one year, I didn't really make any friends. I've always been a bit, a bit of a loner. But anyway, I wasn't unhappy or lonely because I would go to the um, the coffee shop down in Broccoli uh, where they had a jukebox and, uh, believe it or not, coffee and Coca-Cola. And uh, would listen to music and uh, I didn't ever feel lonely. But I was never kind of in a group. I, I was... I, my happiest time was in Bristol when I had lots of friends, lots of activities. But from then on, I never really found that really close friendship with anybody. Um, it didn't bother me too much because uh, maybe I, even then I was fairly unusual and like liked to do the things that I like to do and didn't have to say, oh, would you like to do so-and-so? Uh, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Or I didn't have to consult anybody else. I did what I wanted to do and mainly the things that I wanted to do made me happy. Um, so yes, so I didn't expect to live to, to be beyond the age of 60 and, um, but I did, I did reach 60 and that's when I decided to stop smoking. I didn't make any conscious effort. I just, um, one day decided that, oh, I'm going to stop. So I did. And now I'm almost 77. So, uh, they reckon once you've stopped smoking for 10 years, that you're, uh, you have about the same life expectancy of somebody who's never smoked. I'm not quite sure if I believe in that because I think my lungs were mainly damaged by my health when I was very young, living in unsanitary and bad and damp and mouldy conditions with the lines of nappies drying in the living room, uh, sitting around a coal fire, which was the only for, uh, form of heat. And... Um, and um, no ventilation, very, very damp. And we all had coughs and colds, and I had bronchitis, I had pneumonia when I was a baby. And I think most of the damage to my lungs, especially my left lung, um, was caused during my childhood. So uh, even when I was born, they never expected me to, um, to live because I, I, I was born as a, a blue baby, blue, blue. It doesn't mean I came out telling awful jokes, 
blew a joke, because I didn't speak when I was first born, which is a relief to some people. But anyway, um, I was blue. They had to vigorously massage my body, body, and the doctor who was who came um, gave me a little spoon of brandy, and um, I, then I started to breathe. So I don't think I, I was actually brain damaged, although some may disagree. But um, I've had ups and downs, but now I'm falling apart. I've got. Um, digestive problems which are in the uh, in the body you know inside the body digestive tummy and, and bowel problems um, I've had two major operations the last I think was quite successful um, I don't get so many problems now with diarrhea uh, uh, in fact sometimes it's the reverse um, and what else have I got I've got acute I've got chronic kidney disease, and a chronic kidney disease, that sounds awful, doesn't it? Chronic, oh dear, chronic. I must, but actually, chronic is, just means that um, I haven't got full function of my kidneys. Uh, if you know, oh, the dog's come, sorry. If you know anything about um, um, creatine levels, for those who are interested in kidney disease, the creatine is a measure of how efficient your kidneys are working and I believe my creatine level at the moment is somewhere around 240, 250 and you you would not be considered for, for dialysis until you reach something like 500 so I still have good function but I do suffer from uh, fatigue and um, in just a moment I'll close the door I'm, cl I'm doing recording so I'll close the door um, yeah, chronic fatigue or oh, getting back to health um, so I have COP which I'm not quite sure what that's it's chronic uh, it's disease of the lungs so I get breathless but as far as I know my heart's good uh, I think it's very good my blood pressure is very good although I take blood pressure medication but it's very good I, when I recently took it it was about 1 125 over 80 pulse about 70 something so so it seems to be that i'm going to live quite a bit longer um oh i've had back problems for many many years even when i used to visit in england which is many years ago it was torture for me because i had such back pain that uh, and i i used to get to england and i'd be so so tired and couldn't sleep because of the back pain sometimes i would get irritable and uh, I, I do apologise for people that I was a bit short-tempered with, but mainly it's because I was so tired and I had, I, I had back pain 20, 30 years. And I've had my back x-rayed. They've never found anything wrong. But, but I have, I'm under now a very, very good doctor who takes care of my, my kidney health. And when my back became really difficult and she examined me and moved my legs around, it was so painful, she sent me to an orthopaedic surgeon. When I eventually saw this orth orthopaedic surgeon, um, it turns out that I have a, a tumour on my spine. But he said, it's as far as he's aware, he's, he's almost certain that it's been slow growing, been there a long, long time, and it's benign. So um, I'm not particularly worried about that, but I am due for surgery any time soon on my spine, my lower back. I can't say I'm not worried at all because I don't really like being in hospital. And uh, But anyway, if it does get rid of that awful back pain, which I've had 20, 30 years, then um, it will be a wonderful thing. Uh, there is a slight risk that I may... I mean, I've got problems now with my legs, uh, with neuropathy, per peripheral neuropathy, which affects my feet and my legs. And the, the orthopedic doctor, the... The neurosurgeon said that the only risk is that you may end up with a little bit of a limp. Not, not, not for sure, but it, that's the only possible thing because it's quite delicate to operate on your spine with all those nerves. So, um, okay, my hearing's very good. My eyes are very good. My nose is here, and that's good. Teeth, well, they're not my own teeth. Well, they are my own, but they're not my original ones. The, they're... they're a re, re, replacement teeth when you lose your own teeth and um, 
I'm a little bit overweight, a bit of a, t bit of a tummy, and my wrists are okay, as you can see. They can revolve, turn like this. Uh, shoulders are okay, not too bad. Can't bend much because of the stiffness of my back. Oh, my knees are a problem. Seriously, if I get this back surgery, may, I maybe I've had my knees operated on twice before and my ankles, but maybe I'll have to have the knees done again because I have very painful knees. Apart from that, I'm feeling fantastic. I really am. I'm feeling optimistic. I feel cheerful. And greetings to all my family and friends in the UK and in the world. And peace to all. Peace to all. Love to all. And that's it. Bye-bye. I've got to stop this, haven't I? There must be a stop button somewhere. Stop button.